I, yeah. I, I honestly don't even want to go back to 2008 conditions because right now trading is just so relaxed and simple. <laughs> and when you've got a market that's like moving 400 pips a day, it doesn't matter who you are, you're going to get stressed out by those conditions. Welcome back, everyone. I'm sitting out today with Nick Mancino from Forex for Noobs and CryptoForNoobs.com. Uh, we had him a few times on the podcast. I think you were here three times on the channel on the podcast, Nick. So good to have you back. What's going on? Thank you. Good to be back. Yeah, nothing much. Just the usual. How about you? Awesome. Awesome. So pleasure to have you here again. We'll talk today about something a little bit different than what we talked about last time. You were saying before going live that one of the biggest challenges for people now is the fact that the markets, especially Forex, are kind of changing a little bit. So we see a lot less big moves than before, I, I feel. And there's less volatility than before. So I don't want to talk about that. But for people not knowing you right now that didn't see you before, tell people who you are and just a bit of background about yourself. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. I don't really like talking about myself. Um, <laughs> my name is Nick Bengino, as I'm sure you guys know, because I was just introduced. Uh, I've been trading for 17 years what's 2009? yeah so whatever look let's say 15 to 18 years some somewhere in that range i don't remember exactly how long but yeah i think it's about 17 years i've been trading uh about five years into my trading career i started forexmoves.com uh because you know there was just a lot of trash on the internet back then well i mean compared to now there's uh there wasn't much trash but now it's a lot worse but it, uh i just wanted to start a, a site that actually taught people how to trade and I decided to share my strategy and I mean ever since then I've been just sharing the the same strategy but it's obviously been evolving uh, over the last uh, over the last 12 years when I've been teaching it uh, I'm a full-time trader but I don't really like to call myself a full-time trader because that implies that I'm you know working six hours a day most of my trading is done in uh, about an hour a day uh, because I'm just mostly just scanning the charts, looking for setups. Uh, and when I do have setups, you know, there's obviously a bit more to do then because you need to, you know, enter it into your trading journal, take the trade, manage the trade. So yeah, I'm, I guess I'm a full-time trader, but I mostly just trade, let's say eight hours a week or something like that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. Which is really nice because like you're trading for the freedom also, which is not only like about replacing your job by trading. It's like having trading as your, your income, of course, but not spending that much time on it. So you can do what you like to do and stuff on the side. Oh, yeah. That's like, uh, look, with trading, you can take two approaches or you can take a lot of approaches. But let's talk about two main ones. You can trade six hours a day and that's fine if you want to do that. And you're going to make more money than someone like me who's trading less. Uh, obviously because you're putting more time in, you're taking more trades, uh, but it all just comes down to what you want to do with your life. I personally do not want to sit in front of my computer trading six hours a day, even though I like trading. I just don't want life to be about that. So I've found a way where I can, I can trade a few hours and then have a lot of freedom. Um, but you know, that has drawbacks. Like I said, if I were trading way more, I would obviously make more, more of a return, but I just value my freedom and my time more than I value the extra money I would make if I was trading longer. So, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. We talked about this before, but how would you describe your trading style? Like what was it about exactly? Uh, I mostly just look at what price is doing. So the, basically when you look at a chart, a, a lot of people will throw heaps of indicators on their chart to kind of uh, get an idea of what is going to happen next. And I did that at the start. I threw a lot of indicators on and I just found that I was getting very confused. So I started kind of removing indicators. And eventually I got to a point where I removed every single indicator from my chart and I started just looking at the candles and it just sort of started making sense to me. When I looked at the candles, I could predict with a pretty good degree of accuracy what price was going to do next. But then I realized candles weren't enough and i started putting support resistance areas on my chart so i honestly just forgot the the actual question where you are you asked how i'm trading right yes yeah, so, so uh, what's my, the training style yeah yeah my training style right sorry i will so yeah um 
I basically just trade without indicators, but I do have support resistance areas on my charts, so they're the horizontal ones. I don't use trend lines. Uh, yeah, I don't use anything else. I, actually, I've been putting the 200 moving average on my chart uh, for the past year or two uh, because I find that it acts very well as a support resistance area. And I know a lot of uh, big traders use it, like banks, hedge funds, managed funds, uh, use the 200 moving average as a support resistance area. So I started using that on my chart. That way I could see what they're seeing essentially. And it's been pretty useful, but mostly, uh, yeah, I don't have indicators on my chart and I just trade. Uh, I feel, I believe it's called naked Forex or something like that. Just trade price action and that's it. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I like it. But I don't say uh, that there's nothing wrong with indicators. It's just, it's just my personal choice not to have indicators. Yeah. It's your style. Awesome. Uh, are you trading also the trends with support and resistance areas or are you pretty much trading ranges in the market? Uh, right now I'm trading pretty much exclusively ranges because there just is no trends. And it's what we have exactly. So like you can't yeah. really force it, but I do love trading trends. Trends are awesome to trade because you can get like very good continuation trades in a trend. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, price will break through an area of support resistance. Um, I'll, I'll probably uh, put an example of, of this in the, uh, the article that, that will be released with this podcast. So, you know, if you go back to even last year, the market was trending pretty well on uh, some pairs, not all pairs. So there was a lot of potential for getting into to big trends. Like uh, from memory, New Zealand USD was a huge trend. Though. I'm just bringing up the chart. So, because I don't want to miss, but yeah. So New Zealand USD last year, starting from around about, uh, uh, this period in the year, actually April 17th, it started moving down and it was trending really, really heavily. Uh, and, you know, I was all over that trend. I, th that trend was a great trend to trade. But right now, um, New Zealand USD is doing the complete opposite of trending. It's ranging in a pretty narrow area. Uh, and not just New Zealand USD. I mean, all of them. Euro USD is... Uh, Euro USD, we can explain... Uh, away because of Brexit, that's obviously not going to be trending a lot because there's a lot of uncertainty as is GBP USD. But uh, even the others, AD USD, the trend's gone. Um, pretty much all the majors, the trends are just dried up. Uh, oh, my charts, my uh, layouts are a bit of a mess. USD CAD, USD JPY. USD JPY, I guess, is the only one we could say that has been properly trending this year out of the majors. But it's it's not even a great trend. It's a bit of a weak trend, yeah, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're just not seeing the trends anymore. Yeah. Which are, yeah, which is just the case at this point. So I'm training ranges. So in that case, what do you think is the best way for people to kind of adapt? Because, you know, like people should adapt to the market on a consistent basis. But is it better to kind of try to fight what's happening on the daily chart and still trade higher time frame, or should you go on, let's say lower time frame and try to make your way there? You can still trade the daily chart. Totally nothing wrong with it. I'm personally still trading the daily chart. The thing is, this has all happened before the Forex market moves in cycles. It's not, it's not always going to be trending. It's not always going to be ranging. So if you go back to about 2014 markets, uh, liquidity or volume, whatever you want to call it, it, it just dried up and you weren't getting trends anymore um, for a period of that time. But more importantly, some pairs were trending in that time, but more importantly, what was happening was things just weren't moving. Volatility dropped right down lower than it is today. And I think the previous time that happened was 2006, where volatility just dropped right down lower to, to what it is today. And, you know, in those times, how uh, I, well, the f 2006 was, uh, I was still kind of newish. So yeah, I can't really remember what was happening back then, but 2014, I clearly remember because volatility just dropped right down and I was struggling to, to hit my targets. I would take a trade on the daily chart and it just would never reach target. I would always have to close that trade out pretty early because it would just start to slow down. And then it, you could see that it was about to go back in the opposite direction. So I'd have to close out that trade. Um, so I was, let's say my risk to reward ratio would be one to two on an average trade. 2014, 
I was closing out early. So my losses were eating into my wins a lot more. It just wasn't the best, uh, the best situation. So I kind of analyzed what was happening. I figured out what was going on and I adapted my strategy to better fit those market conditions. And now come 2019, we're seeing the same thing repeat itself. We're seeing market conditions almost replicating what they were in 2014. Uh, volatility has dropped right down. Uh, I believe that volatility is going to pick up again in the coming years, but right now we, we need to trade with what we have. And uh, so to go back to your question, uh, I've started trading, focusing mostly on trading ranges these days because they we're getting ranges across all the pairs. So uh, like I said, with the article that, I, the, that comes out with this uh, uh, podcast, I'll give you specific examples and show you the ranges. Uh, it's hard to show you without a chart, yeah. but there's a, a lot of ranges happening across the board on the majors and even on uh, the cross pairs and knowing how to trade in range conditions as opposed to trends is going to be important. And one of the things you could do is drop down to a lower time frame. immediately. That's going to help because uh, lower time frame means uh, smaller targets overall. So, on a daily chart, you'll find that you'll take a trade and it will just take forever to reach your target, if it even does, yeah. before the market changes its mind and goes in the other direction. But if you drop down to the smaller time frames, uh, your targets are smaller, so you're more likely to hit that target. Um, so when I say smaller time frames, I mean the one hour charts, the four hour charts. If you have access to them, the six hour, the eight hour charts, they're all really good. But you could drop right down to the 15 and 30 minute too and do some scalping using price action. So, you know, there are a lot of options that you can, that you can do. Uh, it just depends, you know, what you want to do. I do the five minute charts these days, you know, scalping five minute charts, which is kind of stressful to be fair, because uh, mm -hmm. a lot happens very fast, but yeah. Uh, anyway, I've, I've been talking for ages. Uh, so yeah but i guess so that that's gonna be right for some people to kind of move on low time frame but i guess some people are gonna say well they have a full-time job they cannot like trade during the day or something so they cannot go on a low time frame what would you say to those people how should they adapt um look like i said you can stick to the daily you're just gonna have to make some changes to what you're doing on the daily so i'll i'll be sharing some specific examples of daily chart trading because if uh, to people who follow me on YouTube and see my analysis, you'll see that I am still trading the daily and it is possible to trade the daily. I've been sharing, uh, to be fair, last week I shared a bunch of trades and I don't think any of them hit target and a few of them hit the stop loss. So last week wasn't the best week for me, uh, but the week before that I shared a bunch of trades and I think most of them hit target. Uh, so, you know, I'm still actively trading the daily and there is still potential trades to be found on the daily. Uh, so, you know, if you just don't have the uh, time to invest in, in your trading because of your job or because of uh, you're just busy, you can still trade the daily. It's not optimal in my opinion at this, uh, in these conditions to trade the daily, but it's still possible. But if you can switch down even to the 12 hour charts, uh, depending on what charting platform you use, you'll have access to 12 hour charts. Even the 12 hour charts are going to be a big improvement because it splits that daily candle into two, uh, two separate candles. So that's going to give you a little bit more. And if you could drop down to the eight hour charts, that's even better uh, because you're just going to see more data and your targets are going to be that little bit smaller. And that's going to allow you to, to hit that target more often. Eight hour chart is not that bad for people who are busy and who have a, a full time job because you know, how long is your job? It's about nine hours that you're, you're at work. Uh, if you throw in the commute, let's say 10 hours on average, I would guess anyway. So, you know, you can check, if you can check on your lunch break, you're going to see every candle, right? You'll see the every eight hour candle forming throughout the day. So you can make pretty good trading decisions, not as good as you could do with a daily, but, uh, you should be able to catch most trades on the eight hour, even if you have a full time job. So yeah, you don't have to drop all the way down to the one hour, but eight hour, twelve hour, totally doable in, in my opinion.
Mm -hmm. Are there any differences between the let's say twelve hour or eight hour chart and the daily chart, or they are pretty much the same? You look at the same setup. Because some people might agree it's different because it's a different time frame. People don't look at most of the time. So what are you using? Uh, I've never looked at those too much. I uh, I use pretty much the same strategy. I'll just find that my targets are a little bit smaller because uh, the eight hour, for example, is going to allow you to get a better entry. And my targets are based on risk to reward ratio. So, well, they're also based on price action. I'm never going to place my target beyond a resistance area if I'm going long. I'm never going to place it beyond a support area if I'm going short because anyway, I'll explain that in the article. Um, but yeah, with, uh, with the eight hour, so if you enter a trade, you're usually going to get a better entry than you do on the daily because the entry is going to, because the candles are, there's more candles, you can get an entry that's going to be a little bit lower or a little bit higher depending on the direction you're trading. So the eight hour, essentially, you're going to get, you're going to get better entries. You're going to get uh, a target that's nearer to you. And yeah, you're going to hit that target easier in most cases. So there's not, that much difference in terms of the setups I'm looking for and the setups I'm trading. It's just the better entries make the target uh, overall closer and uh, it leads to, to trades that are just better for these conditions. And is that going to come with a lower win rate you've seen or it's pretty much the same thing as a bigger time frame? Uh, lower win rate, yes. You're generally speaking, the lower time frame you go, at least with my strategy, but I believe with most strategies, the lower the time frame, the lower the win rate, because uh, you're going to get faked out on some trades. The daily, when it starts to turn around, uh, you're more likely to, because price has already turned around in a big way, it's more likely to continue moving in your direction. Uh, whereas the eight hour, but to be honest, though, this is going back to my stats from a few years ago. That That's where uh, I was looking at the differences between my, my uh, win rates on the timeframes and the daily was less. To be honest, this year, I would probably guess, and I'm not 100% sure because I just do not have enough statistics yet. We're only three months into the year. But given how the markets are moving right now, I would, I would guess that the eight hour is probably more profitable just because the daily is not moving enough to hit uh, targets uh, as often as the eight hour is. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't want to say 100% because, I, like I said, I don't have the numbers to back me up. But my gut feeling is the 8-hour would probably be more profitable than the daily in current market conditions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is what I've seen for myself in the past, pretty much the, the, the past year. So the setup that I take on the one-hour chart are winning more than the one on the four-hour chart for some reason. And even more than the yeah. daily chart. So that's kind of what I've seen the reverse in the past year. But it could be the same for you, could, could be different. So it's kind of, yeah, kind of I've been doing but. one hour chart trading lately. I haven't really been sharing that on my YouTube channel because uh, mm. uh, I'm still, you know, I didn't trade the one hour for quite some time. So we're looking at, I don't know. Uh, last time I traded the one hour chart was probably 2014 when I was actively trading it. So when I, um, when I switched back to the one, I, I never like sharing on YouTube stuff that I'm just experimenting with personally. Yeah. Cause uh, that's tricky. It might work. Might yeah. Not work. Yeah. yeah. And I don't want to lead people down the wrong path when I'm just testing something myself. So now that I've been doing it for three months, I'm more willing to talk about it cause I'm seeing the results and they're working quite well. So the one hour chart is, is quite good to trade at the moment. Uh, but like you said, it's not for everyone. If you have a full time job, it might be a bit tricky to trade one hour charts. Uh, but yeah, one hour chart, even four hour chart is awesome. And I've dropped right down to the 15 minute and the 30 minute in some cases. Uh, and I'm finding that I have, I'm finding one of my best win rates, which is crazy, but it's true is on the five minute chart for some reason. Yeah. Um, when I ran my initial analysis, uh, risk analysis, when I was planning to trade scalp the five minute charts, I was thinking that I was going to get about a 45 to 50% win rate on that chart, but that was going to be okay because it's offset by the risk to reward ratio being one to three. So even with a 30% win rate, you'd still be profitable with a one to three risk reward ratio. 
but you know, I was predicting 40 to 50%, but there are some weeks where, and some months even where I'm getting closer to the 70% and I can't really explain that at all because it just makes no logical sense. And it sounds like a complete lie because any trader that says uh, they trade with 70% success rate, I'd yeah. be like very dubious as to whether to believe them. Uh, and honestly, I think a lot of it comes down to just my experience with trading. I can handle the stresses of trading the five minute chart. Uh, I don't think if you're as experienced, uh, you're probably not gonna get that win rate. And I, I also don't think that win rate is sustainable over the long term. I think for the first few months of this year, I'm hitting that win rate, but I think realistically, um, it's just a very good streak. And I think I'm gonna fall somewhere in the 50 to 60% range with win rate, maybe even a bit lower than that. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's just, uh, that, that's offset by the targets. I have targets three times larger than my stop. So with a 50% win rate, it's still hugely profitable. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm doing with five minute. Uh, yeah, one hour chart, I don't have enough data to actually say what my win rate is because there's just not enough trades so far this year. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. So what would be your opinion on So let's say you have a strategy that works like really well on average over like the past say, 10 years and the results are kind of okay, but it's not performing too well now. And you have another strategy that's not performing too well in the past 10 years, but really like killing it right now in these conditions. So would you still use the one that's killing it right now for some time or how would you adapt to it? Would you just not use it at all or kind of use it for some time and see how it behaves? Uh, well, for me, my strategy is more of an overall, like I don't have separate strategies. Well, I guess you would say the scalping, the scalping strategy is, is separate at this point. It, the, the lines are becoming a bit blurred with my strategies now. So uh, right now I am focusing more on the scalping side of things. So yeah, I would say, I wouldn't say to ever stop trading uh, a strategy unless it's, it's um, costing you money. If it's costing you money and you're consistently losing, then you might want to ease off on that strategy and just put it on the back burner and trade it on a demo account even. So don't yeah. fully stop trading it. Trade it on a demo account uh, just so you could see when it starts to pick up again, right? Because you don't want to just stop trading it completely. But uh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you should never stop trading a strategy completely, in my opinion. Uh, even professional traders, uh, I believe, because I do it personally, still trade demo accounts uh, just to test new ideas. And if I ever found that one of my strategies, uh, one of the two strategies wasn't really working that well, I'd switch it over to demo, keep trading it just to kind of uh, work out some of the kinks, see what changes I can make and see if it's just market conditions and market conditions need to swing back to a place where that strategy is profitable. Luckily for me, that's not happened yet, but you know, forest markets always changing. So, yeah. you know, it could very well happen and that's probably how I'll deal with it. And that's kind of what you have to adapt also. So I'm kind of curious for, because I really want people to be independent to kind of be able to look at the market and know when to change things. So how do you spot that? the market was different, that the volatility was different. Was it just by looking at the chart and seeing different patterns or something different? Uh, I have, uh, I'm a bit like of a trading nerd, I guess you would call me. I yeah. like keep a lot of statistics. So I basically uh, download uh, one minute chart data for, sorry, not one minute chart data, um, daily chart data, but uh, with all the ticks uh, as low as the one minute chart. Anyway, look, I'm describing this badly. I download daily chart data. Uh, I put it into Excel and I get the average daily range of each uh, daily candle. And then I'll plot that onto a graph and it tells me the average daily range. I can't really show that to you. I don't think this software okay. has. Oh, uh, never mind. I'll just put it in the article. You'll see it in the okay, article. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, because a lot of people are listening here, so they won't be able to see it anyway. Um, but yeah, so I, I plot this all into a chart and it gives me an idea of uh, what the average daily ranges are. I've now, I've since automated this process, uh, by using uh, feed from Oanda to download the data by API, uh, onto, um, a database table on my website where I have a private page that I can see with these stats, which I'm probably going to make public at some point. Uh, it's just in the testing phases right now, but, um, 
in in front of me right now i have uh the average daily range is across all the majors so all the major pairs on average how much how many pips do they move in a day from the highest to the lowest point and that tells you uh just how much stuff is moving so volatility uh and it used to be 165 pips in on average in 2008 because uh, that was pretty much the peak time for forex and that's uh one of the, my best my best trading years ever was 2008 because the markets were just absolutely crazy um and then it started dropping down from 2008 uh pretty slowly until 2014 where it was at its lowest point that it's been in the past i think i think the past 20 years i could be wrong about that um and then all of a sudden boom it picked up in 2015 2016 it went back up to what it was in like 2010 uh and then all of a sudden it started swinging back in the other direction and going back down so right now uh to sum this up we're seeing 77 pips in 2018 we yeah, saw is, an average movement of 77 pips per day across all the majors, which is very low. Which is less than half than before. It's pretty yeah. Good. Yeah. And um, now this year we're seeing less. It's only three months in, so we can't say what it would be like yeah. for the whole year, but we're seeing even less. We're seeing it drop down to 2014 lows. So it's averaging around 70 to 73 pips per day across all the majors, which is so low compared to yeah. our compared to what it's been so yeah that's why i've been adapting and, and changing how i trade and looking for ranges mostly that's interesting was it performance in 2008 based on the financial crisis do you think there was a link or was it two different things yes I, I think there was a huge link uh there, there, there was a huge link. It was crazy. 2008. Anyone can see this themselves. Go to GBP JPY, scroll back your charts to 2008 on the daily, and you'll just see some of the most insane movements you'll ever see in the Forex market. Uh, you know, it, wait, let me, I really hate saying things without being sure what I'm saying is true. So I just want to quickly scroll back on this chart to tell you like the precise numbers. So there was one day, this was probably the biggest um, candle, one day where GPJPY moved 2,720 pips in a single day. Wow. That was the biggest, but on average, it was doing, you know, 600, 700 pips a day uh, back then, which is completely absurd compared to today where it's doing like 100 pips a day, uh, maybe 200 pips on some days. So yeah, market conditions in 2008 were absolutely crazy. I was trading almost exclusively GBP, JPY uh, back then. And, you know, I would take a trade and within, within an hour, I've made like 500 pips. It's just gone boom, straight in my direction. And yeah, it was just a crazy, crazy time to trade. It was, it was awesome. Uh, and I think it was thanks to the financial crisis, which kind of makes me feel bad because I always say to myself, mm, I hope, I hope we get those kind of market conditions again. But then I'm thinking, but do we have to go through another financial crisis for that? And a lot of people would get hurt. So probably better that we don't see those market conditions again, because I think it's going to come at the cost of a, a lot of people. Yeah. But yeah. Who knows? But it's quite a good thing to know that you can still survive in the financial crisis yourself. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's kind of a good thing. Yeah, yeah, now, definitely, definitely. Given the fact that there might be another crisis coming up in the next few months or years, how do you think people should adapt? Should they just keep trading the same thing they trade or kind of do something different? Uh, okay, if there is another crash, which I'm not convinced there will be. I mean, eventually there always is, but uh, I've been hearing people say there's a crash coming in the next few months for the past three years. Oh, wow, and yeah, just yeah, never yeah. come. So uh, I'm not convinced that it's coming, but if it does come and the conditions are the same as 2008, then things are just going to go crazy in the Forex world. Uh, there's going to be a lot of adapting needed to trade those conditions. Um, you know, I, I think reversal trading will be 
mostly, uh, well, I wouldn't say out of the window, it's just going to be a lot harder to trade reversals and you're going to focus more on continuations, continuations of trends. So you're going to be looking for the trend and you're going to be looking how to, how to get in on that trend and keep that trade going. So yeah, th if there is another financial crisis, uh, things are going to have to change a lot with most people's trading strategies because what we saw in the two, in the 2008 crash, 2009 crash, uh, as things started getting better, the markets were still moving a lot. Uh, 2009, 2010, uh, average daily ranges were still quite high. And you saw a lot of traders being hired, uh, uh, prop funds, managed funds, hedge funds. There were a lot of traders being hired because their performance was just off the charts good. Then a few years later, when things start to slow down, all those traders started losing their jobs because they couldn't adapt to those changing conditions. So, you know, if the market cycles back to, to uh, 2008 conditions, things are going to change so drastically that I think most trading strategies out there are, are going to have to adapt or die. Um, I think a lot of traders working for managed funds, hedge funds and stuff, that have more conservative strategies, which are doing well these days, they're going to lose their jobs because they're being outperformed by traders who have uh, kind of riskier strategies, which are suited well to those crazy conditions. So yeah, I think for traders, traders are in a great position where in a financial crisis, we can still make our living, but we are going to need to adapt and we're going to need to, to make big changes to our strategies in order to, to continue to make a living in those situations. If 2008 is anything to go by anyway, uh, that's the only true financial crisis I've traded through. So I can't really say I have a lot of experience with it. But that's really interesting. It's like, so I've never been through a crisis myself trading. So that's an interesting principle for sure. So the greatest people, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. I'm really scared when it happens because not, not for my trading personally, I think I'll survive fine in, in trading. I'm just scared for what's going to happen to the world next time a financial crisis hits. Yeah. So like that instability, things aren't that stable at the moment and the instability of, uh, of a financial crisis might tip things over the edge. So I personally do not want to see one, even if I might make a lot of money, I just don't want to see another financial crisis. But hey, it looks like it might, might happen in the coming years. So. Just gonna have to do, yeah. uh, learn to deal with it. To go back to low volatility stuff, do you have any favorite setup in the market in low volatility, or is it kind of a mix of understanding what happens and then training that? A hundred percent ranges. Uh, I've always loved trading ranges, but uh, since around 2014, trading ranges became very hard because things were mm -hmm. kind of moving quite well. So uh, after the end of 2014's lows, is what I mean. Um, so trading ranges kind of became a bit tricky uh, because things just weren't ranging anymore. They were just kind of moving in decent trends. Uh, then last year, I felt that ranges really kind of came back. There were still trends last year, don't get me wrong, but there was a lot of trends and there were also a lot of ranges. So range trading kind of like really picked up for me last year. And this year so far, the first three months, it's just been all ranges. Now, I love trading ranges because what is a range? Essentially, you've got like a top, a bottom, top and bottom of the range. Price just bounces between the top and bottom. It's so predictable and so simple to trade. You know, it's probably one of the easiest ways anyone can trade. You short the top, you long the bottom, short the top, long the bottom, and it just keeps going bam, bam, up and down, up and down. So range training for sure is is my favorite setup to trade right now it's uh, easy and you can do it across the board ranges are happening on the daily new zealand usd right now is ranging between uh ranging between around about 69 20 and the lower part of that range is 67 40. uh if you look at the last since the 13th of november 2018 it's mostly been in that range. There was a brief period where it broke out, but it's mostly just been in that range. So it's very, very predictable and easy trading. But you could take that right down to the lower time frames. You could go down to the one hour chart and you could see ranges, uh, four hour chart. You could take that down right to the 15 and 30 minute chart and you're still going to see ranges that are happening uh, 
and they're just very easy, very predictable to trade. Uh, so yeah, yeah Rangers are uh, by far my favorite setups to trade right now. They're and awesome. Yeah, they have a specific way of trading them, or it's only placing orders at the top of the low of the range, or take something more in depth and more specific. I, it is a bit more in depth. I was I was simplifying a little bit there because you can't just you know as soon as it yeah. hits the top of the range, short. You need to know where to place your stop loss, where to place your target, and uh, obviously your entry. So there is a bit more to it than that. I don't want to oversimplify things. I'll be doing a full write-up on it, which will be released along with this awesome. uh, yeah. podcast, where I'll explain how I trade ranges, and you know, I'll, I'll be going into it in depth so people will understand and and can trade them. But uh, even though there, it is a little bit more complicated than than I said, it's still in my opinion, one of the easiest ways to trade uh, yeah, yeah. because it's just, there's no, oh, it might break out of this range. Well, no, that's not true. It's, there's always a possibility that it breaks out of a range, but it's, it's a rarer occurrence where it breaks out of the range. So you know with a pretty good degree of accuracy that when it hits the top of that range, it's going to slow down and turn around. And when it hits the bottom of that range, it's going to slow down and turn around. Sometimes the range is going to break and when it breaks, uh, you lose a trade, but that's just the reality of trading. Uh, and then eventually it just gets into another range. Uh, that's what we're seeing right now anyway. Yeah. It's kind of why I, like, ranges I like ranges also, yeah. It's the best. Yeah, they're, best. they're just awesome. It's just, it's just predictability. I, yeah. I, I honestly don't even want to go back to 2008 conditions because right now trading is just so relaxed and simple. <laughs> and when you've got a market that's like moving 400 pips a day, it doesn't matter who you are. You're going to get stressed out by those conditions. It's yeah, going to stress yeah. you out because you make one mistake, one little mistake, like you forget to set your stop loss, you forget to set your target, or you just set your stop loss wrong. The market could just cost you a lot of money when it just goes boom, 400 pips in the opposite direction. And the slippage was insane back then. You would get slipped way more than, than you would ever get yeah. slipped today because things were moving too fast. So... You know, I honestly would probably, maybe it's also because I'm a bit older now and I just like having things chilled out and relaxed. Uh, I would take ranges uh, over 2008 craziness any day of the week. Even if it's overall, I would say probably less profitable because things aren't moving like a stupid amount. It's just more relaxed and more chilled out. But I think the, the key point here is to know how to adapt and when to adapt. I think that's the biggest takeaway for people. Yeah, for sure. You, you need to be able to adapt when you're a trader. You can't just like, you can't have a trading strategy, right? That works super well in 2000 and uh, let's say 2016, works super well in 2016. And then you think that that strategy is going to keep working for you for the rest of your trading career um, without being adapted. I'm not saying you have to change your strategy completely. You have to go to different strategies. I, I honestly think switching strategies too much is, is a very bad thing in, in yeah. trading. So I'm not saying switch your strategy, but I'm saying adapt your strategy. So you might need to change the way you do your targets. You might need to change the, the time frame. You might need to change your entries. There's a lot of things you can tweak and change. And you need to keep track of how the market is moving in order to do that. So not only average daily ranges, I've spoken a lot about average daily ranges, but last year, average daily ranges were quite low, but we were seeing trends also. So just because the market wasn't moving a lot each day, it was still moving overall in the same direction. Because if you look at uh, ADUSD, for example, trended a lot, EURUSD trended a lot uh, from from about the, yeah, a lot of them started in April. A lot of these, range, uh, these trends last year started in April where things just started going down on uh, like Euro USD, AUD USD, New Zealand USD. Um, so, you, you know, you don't only have to keep track of average daily ranges. You also have to keep track of what the market's doing. Is it ranging? Is it trending? And your strategy needs to be able to adapt to those changing conditions. That's why with my strategy specifically, I trade reversals, I trade continuations, I trade ranges. And then there's a whole bunch of other uh, setups, which uh, are not on my YouTube channel, but there are a whole bunch of other setups I trade. And sometimes, you know, there's going to be periods where continuations are the main thing I'm looking at. Continuation trading is essentially trend, trading the trend because the trend is your friend. But when there is no trend, then 
the trend is no longer your friend because it's just not there. So then continuation trading stops being a big thing for me and I switch to ranges. So my strategy is, is very varied in the setups I can take. I have like seven key setups that I look at and at any one time, I would say about three to four of those setups are the ones that are being traded and the other setups are kind of on the back burner waiting for market conditions to change. Uh, that way they can be traded right now. Range is king. Uh, range, my range trading setups. Uh, reversals are also awesome at the moment. Um, and then, yeah, the other ones uh, are too complex to explain, but uh, yeah. It's awesome. Cool. So you're going to write an article with this uh, podcast, this video. People can check out. We'll link it below the video or in the podcast show notes. People can, can read this and go through. And uh, where can people find you if they'll connect with you or reach out after this podcast or video? Where, sorry, uh, where can people, where can people find, find you? Where can people connect with you if they want to reach out after this uh, video? Oh, uh, yeah, just through my site, uh, forexfornoobs.com. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm pretty available to chat with people about trading. Uh, to be honest, I, I tend to chat with a lot of my site users. So, uh, I'll be releasing a post uh, on my blog, an article, uh, which uh, you'll link to. So in the comment section of that article, just uh, drop your question in there and I'll, I'll answer it. So yeah, awesome. forexfornoobs.com uh, is my site. Yeah, check it out. Perfect. And under this video, also people are going to leave their comments and their questions for sure. So you guys can comment there if you have any questions for Nick, build a video and he'll be able to reply to you for sure. On your YouTube channel? Yeah, of course. All right, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to. Be... <laughs> awesome. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll make a note of keeping track of the comments on your awesome. YouTube channel. Awesome. Cool. Right, cool. cool. Nick, I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure to have you here, and uh, we'll catch you guys pretty soon.